once I've re- read and analyzed the script and looked at the rushes, um, I will then f- I'll put down a basic uh, master shot and put the whole scene together as a master shot so I know what the action is and block it and then go in because I'll know at one particular point there'll be a transition in emotion, then I'll know I'll be on a close-up view or whatever, and then it'll be the reverse, and so I'll work out from that. Sometimes I work from the top of the scene, along the timeline, go down to the end, and so, but the danger of that is everything starts to become the same, so you start in the wide and you start to go close. So sometimes you work backwards from the end and work forwards, and then sometimes I'll start in the middle and work out. So, uh, but the real key is to getting that rhythm right. And the rhythm comes out of the dialogue very often because of the, or just in the nature of the action. And very, it, it shouldn't be forced and it'll come out naturally. And if it's a natural rhythm, you won't see the editing. I work on a principle of uh, fixed points in space and time, just like Dr. Hurry. So you know there's going to be a point in a script where there's a translation and emotion, there's a transition moment. So you know you're going to be there. But you know you're going to start and an end. And there are other things that the actors are doing or the camera's doing or the director's doing. And, uh, and those fi- come all fixed points. So you know that you've got those and then you work around that and get a rhythm going for the scene. And, and getting that rhythm going, the rhythm is your friend because it hides the editing. You don't want editing to be seen. Occasionally you're, you're, you're allowed to be, be flashy, like Sherlock, you're allowed to be bold and it's in your face. Uh, but even then, most of the time you're in a scene, it's, it's just straight editing and you want it to be, you don't want it to get in the way of, of the, of the emotional exchange. I was running a, a, an episode of, I think it was Doctor Who, and uh, I turned around and the, the three execs were crying. <laughs> and that was the best moment, because yeah, yeah, it worked. <laughs> and that was for Torchwood when, when one of the characters died, and I was just like, I, made, I did it. I made them all cry at once. As assistants, if they're working in a facility company, I would say, get permission to work on the rushes of the show. You know, speak to the editor, say, can I try cutting a scene? It doesn't have to show it to anybody, just get permission, just so you can work on real material. Getting hold of real material is difficult. And you'll start, all of a sudden you'll see, well, the continuity isn't always perfect uh, from take to take to take. Well, the performance will vary over. And so it's a way, so you'll f- come across all the problems you get in the real world. And also do their own things, because the equipment's so reasonably priced now, as compared to what it was. It's not, a, it's not difficult. I've used the Avid for for years now and uh, for everything. And also, you can hand it over in it to the onlining stage. And if they're using the same system, all the effects go across automatically. The basic effects on Avid are very, very, very useful. So you can do uh, animats and split screens and tracking. The tracking around is very good, amazingly good for straight out of the box. So there's lots of things you can do. And don't think of effects as effects. Think of them as storytelling devices. I think that's the the real key.